Let's take a look at the different kind of curves you can make using the Bezier spline script. Basically, it boils down to two different categories of curves, CV curves and point curves. CV curves are the uniform B-spline and the classic Bezier curve. They surround the polyline tool. And these curves are created with control points that don't lie on the curve. They're best used to create a very organic shape where you have a lot of control over the curvature. The other curves are point curves, and their control points lie on the curve. You can see that with these icons. All of the red dots lie on these curves. Now I'll draw each one of the curves so we can compare them. I'll draw them on this armature, which is a grouped polyline, so we don't create any surfaces between this polyline and the new curves that we draw. So I'll just go ahead and start with the classic Bezier curve. I'll click a point. Notice that we're in start to end mode. Press shift twice to go into the open ended mode and then click points on each one of these vertices. I'll double click here to exit creation mode. Now if I drag a control point, you can see that I can really affect the whole shape of the curve just from one control point. This is the great advantage of the classic Bezier curve. You can really form the curve very easily by adjusting the position of these control points. Next to that, I'll create a uniform B-spline. You may have heard of NURBS. NURBS are non-uniform B-splines. This is, the math here is just slightly different. So in this tool, the first thing you're presented with is this question. What order do you want to make? Well, let's just start with zero. Zero means automatic. OK. I'll go over here and click these same points. And double click to exit creation mode. Now the curve has a little bit of a different shape compared to the classic Bezier spline. And I'm just going to toggle off vertex marks by pressing here so that we can make more of a straight comparison. In the same way, we can drag the control point and we can affect the whole shape of the curve. But we have one additional ability here that we didn't have before with the classic Bezier. We have the tab key. Press the tab key and this dialog box reappears. I'll set a number like 7. And actually nothing changed. It's the same curve. I'll press the tab key again and press 3. The curve pulls in tighter to the control polygon. So this is the control you have with herbs or uniform rational B splines. You have the ability to suck the curve in closer to the control polygon, or you can push it further away by using a higher number. The other category of Bezier splines are the point curves, and they're located here and here. These two tools have to do with polylines. And I think Fredo has spaced these out like this to teach us something about their shapes, and you'll see that in a moment. The Catmull spline works like this. Notice that the curve itself passes through these points that I've clicked. It has kind of a wonky shape here. It's not very smooth. If we grab a point and move it, we really are affecting the whole curve just as we were before with the CV curves. When I move that around, the whole curve is getting affected. I can increase the curvature here by adding more control points on this curve, and we can do that with the precision value down here. Right now it's set to 7. I'm going to change that to 14S and press the return key. That adds more of these vertices, and I'm going to toggle them off just so we can focus on the curve. I'll double click off to the side to finish drawing that. This is the cubic Bezier curve, and it has a slightly different shape. It's a little bit larger in its curvature as compared to the Catmull ROM. I'll set its precision at 14S. It makes it a little bit more curved. The F-spline has the largest bulge of these three. And I'm going to set its precision a little bit differently. Right now, the precision is set to 30, and it has a higher number by default because the precision is evaluated all the way across the curve instead of in between each control point. So I'll type 50S and press Enter. And I'll toggle the vertex marks off. So this one has a little bit of a different shape. It's a little smoother than the other two. 
Another thing that the F spline has going for it is the fact that when you make a change to it, here I'm just going to toggle vertex marks off again, the change is a little bit more local. When I change this, I'm not really changing the curve over here in this area so much. Take a look at that again. It stays pretty much the same. Let's just compare that with the cubic bezier. You'll see that I'm affecting that curve a lot more over here. So the F-spline has a little bit more local curvature control, and it's a bit smoother than the other two. The last curve type is the Corbett, and it's sort of in a category all by itself. It's composed of arcs that are tangent to each other. That's what you get with a Corbett. Curves can be converted to different types. You can take a point curve, such as an F-spline, and convert it to a polyline. And that polyline can be a straight polyline, or you can divide the polyline into a distance or a number of segments. Let's try the segmenter. Let's say we want 30 segments, OK. So the math behind this representation has changed. Now it's a segmented polygon divided into 30 equal segments. Now when I drag a control point like that, I have a really different effect than I had previously with the F-spline. Undo. Similarly, I could convert that to a polyline divider. And here I would set a distance interval. Let's say it's one foot. That gives us even more points. And we still have the ability to edit it, but now only as a polyline. So there's a series of straight segments connecting the points, but the editing ability has changed. With a CV curve, such as this classic Bezier curve, we can convert it to many other types. I could make this an F-spline, for example. And now I can edit it in a different fashion. I still have the ability to set the precision. So I could say 50S, and I'd get more curve. Let's go for 75S in this case, because we have some pretty tight corners that we want to go around. That's going to give us a nice smooth curve. Once it is a point curve, then you can only convert it to a polyline or one of the divisions or segments of that. You can also convert regular SketchUp lines to any of these curves in the following fashion. I'll just draw some line segments here. And I'll select them all. Right now they're all individual segments. I'll go to the Plugins menu and weld them together into a polyline. I don't want to close the curve, and I don't want to find faces for the curve. Now it's a single object. I can then right-click and convert it to a polyline. And from there, I can convert it to one of the data types. So let's make it a F-spline. Now I have the ability to adjust it, just as if I had drawn that with the F-spline tool. You can close the loop and create a surface from any one of the Bezier spline tools. Right-click, edit the spline, right-click again, and here you can choose to close the loop with a line, thus creating a surface or you can close the loop nicely, which means with a nice smooth curve. The number of subdivisions in this last segment that closes the loop is controlled separately from the precision of the curve. The loop is controlled here, and the precision is here. First of all, let's look at the precision value. I'll change this to 15S. That sets the precision of the curve. Notice that that changed all the rest of the curve, but it didn't touch what's happening in the loop set the precision back up to 40s, and then let's change the loop by typing in 10c. That changes the number of vertices just in this last segment. So in this way you can make your curve nice and smooth throughout. You have very fine control over how many segments are generated because ultimately everything has to be represented by a series of straight line segments in SketchUp. But we have this higher order mathematics that we can use here with Bezier Spline that allows us to shape curves and make them nice and smooth or a little bit more jagged, as the case may be. And when you're creating 3D models, you'll want to have a really close eye on the number of segments that you create, because this has a bearing upon the number of polygons in your model and how long it will take to render.
So I can push-pull that curve up, thus making a solid.